Between hope and realpolitik, how best to defend human rights? In the interview, the German Government Commissioner for Human Rights and Humanitarian Affairs, Markus Löning. Markus Löning, the German Government's uh, Commissioner for Human Rights and Humanitarian Aid. Let's begin with human rights. Back in 1948, the United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which implied that human rights are universal. The question is, of course, are they? They are, without any doubt and without any restriction. Any single man, any single woman, any single child is entitled to protection of life, of its life, and to protection of its liberty. So I think we should not have a debate on the universality of human rights. We should say that is clear to us and it's not to be debated. Every person, every man, woman and child has a right to protection, but the UN body that would give that protection to people is the United Nations Human Rights Council. Now that body, as you well know, is, is dominated, say its critics at least, by African and uh, Islamic nations that have the backing of Russia, of Cuba, of China and so on, that protect themselves from criticism. They don't protect human rights. Well, it's the responsibility of every national government to protect its citizens. It's not the responsibility of the UN. We don't have a world police, a world human rights police in the UN. Responsibility lies very clearly with the national government to protect their citizens. The Human Rights Council has a different uh, job. It's the, the job there to debate situations in countries. Every country, country has to come up with a report on the situation within its boundaries. It's up for debate there. Other countries, non-governmental organizations are going to criticize this country, say, okay, have you looked at this? Have you looked at that? You have a problem here and, and the governments need to respond. The good thing about the Human Rights uh, Council is the, the public exposition of the situation and the situation that countries' governments have to defend themselves. Okay, let's talk though specifically about what influence Germany can have on this debate. Let's take one example. When you came into office as the Human Rights Commissioner, you said you wanted to have an influence on the debate, the global debate about capital punishment and on press freedom. Now, you took part in a meeting, in a high-level meeting with Chinese authorities, uh, the German-Chinese Human Rights Dialogue, and you came out of that meeting on the issue of capital punishment, if I understand you correctly, relatively upbeat. Actually, we heard some good news from the Chinese in that meeting. They said basically two things. They said in the long run they want to abolish the capital punishment, which is good news. We can believe it. We in, cannot believe it. In the it. long run. In the long run. They said that that is the political goal, which is a good thing. If that's what they're saying, we should support that. But they said in the short run, they want to reduce the number of convictions and they want to reduce the number of people that are um, that are hanged or otherwise uh, okay. executed. executed. So I think that in this second part we can support and we should support what the Chinese government is doing. They are changing their laws, they are reducing for example the number of uh, things that you can be punished by capital punishment. But these are mainly offences where capital punishment is actually rarely applied. You know that as well as I do. Any single man or woman that is not executed is a victory. It's never enough until there are no executions. But if the Chinese government is moving in that direction, we, should support, we have to acknowledge that and we should support them and we should put pressure on them to be faster in what they're doing. This sounds a lot like diplomacy, though. For you, one very important issue is, is balancing realpolitik interests, Germany's interests, of course, with human rights considerations. And um, I think there it's, you know, we, we know that Germany's recent economic surge is very closely tied to the Chinese economy and that the Chinese government works very closely with dictatorships around the world. How do you make all that add up? Well, first of all, human rights and economic interests or trade interests can go together. I mean, obviously Germany 
Germany's voice in China is heard in a different way if we have a 100 billion trade exchange every day, uh, every year. Which means that the Chinese government says, well, this is a very important partner to us. We need to listen to what they're saying. And was that also the feeling when rights. you met the Chinese and you were, you were sitting opposite the Chinese representatives? Was that the feeling that you had, that the Chinese are listening to the Germans, partly because of are, these close ties? They are taking it serious, what we're saying. But what is very clear, there are differences. I mean, on uh, freedom of speech, there's a very clear difference. On the right to access to courts, there's a clear difference. On other human rights questions, there are clear differences. How do you treat minorities? What can, are they allowed to say? What, where is the end of, the, uh, of freedom of speech? And where not? And that's, we have differences on that. That is very clear. But the things we are saying are taken serious by, by the Chinese. It does not mean that they're changing their policies tomorrow. Point taken. Let's talk, let's talk about another question, another, another issue that has been really making headlines. People are concerned globally about the, uh, the, the, the sentence that has been passed down in Iran on a 43-year-old woman on charges of adultery. She should be stoned to death. And there have been two similar cases confirmed by Iranian courts very, very recently. How can you, how can Germany exercise an influence on a matter like that? The thing we can do in, that, in, in these cases is we have to speak out publicly, very clearly, and we have to tell the Iranian government very clearly that this kind of death sentence is especially inhuman. It is even worse than anything else. I mean, executing someone is always inhuman, but executing someone by stoning is really disgusting. And we have to make clear very have to be very clear towards the Iranian government that the world community is going to turn away from Iran even more. OK, you can go public with statements. Can you behind the scenes have influence? If it's behind the scenes, it's behind the scenes. So I'm <laughs> not going to talk about it here, obviously. So, of course, there are, we okay. always... The, the first thing we look at is if we go public, is it, does it help this specific person or not? So there are cases when, where I will not go public because people in the country, our embassy said, if you go public, this could lead to a harder sentence. So be careful for what you say. You're also the German government's uh, commissioner for humanitarian aid, and you were recently in Pakistan, a country that's going through in the throes of a, of a unbelievable catastrophe of absolutely epic and really almost unprecedented proportions. What did you learn while you were in Pakistan? What well, is two things I learned. One thing is uh, we should maybe revise the pictures that we have in our heads about Pakistan and the images. These are people that are, they are not the Taliban or anything like that. They are very, very normal people, many of them very poor people, families, lots of children. They lost their homes. They need our help. And we have to look at very much on, on a on a human basis and that's why I really call on everybody to help to donate money to make sure that these people especially the ch children can survive. Has the German government been doing enough? My feeling is that we will probably have to to give more money just the, the sheer size of what is ha has been happening there is is unbelievable. I talked to some of uh, some UN experts on the ground in Pakistan and they have seen a lot, a lot of catastrophes, and they were shocked themselves by the sheer size of what was happening there. Marcus, learning on that note, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you for speaking to us today.